Ok, guys, we're here today with Vinicius Raculino, huge honor for me. Guys, one of the best Jiu-Jitsu coaches in the history of the sport, one of the coaches who has made the biggest amount of world champions as a black belt. So if you start saying names here, it's like Romulo Barral, Felipe Pena, Preguiça, Samuel Braga, Eric Vanderlei, a bunch of Andres is here. Yeah. 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 Now uh, Lucas Valente is on his school and got second in the words in his second year. So for sure one of the best jiu-jitsu coaches out there. Eric Vanderlei. Eric Vanderlei, yeah. I think. But uh, guys, and he's very, very, very well known about having like one of the best like old school games in jiu-jitsu that I know that's something that everybody likes. So we are showing one entire instructional here with him about like the old school versus the new school. And uh, it's two different instructions, one about the top game and one about the bottom game. And today he's going to show us here one of the techniques about the top game. So it's going to be on bjjfanatics.com. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So I'm super excited to learn. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thanks. Going for a long time. And guys, uh, he, his, his school in Brazil was in the same state as mine, Minas Gerais. So I grew up in Jiu-Jitsu hearing his name like every single day. He had the biggest school, the best school over there. And everybody in training, someone would say something like, oh, the Vinicius Draculino School, the Gracie Barra BH. Yeah. So, such an honor to be here. Ooh, man. Good to be here. Well, so, guys, uh, I will show like something that is a submission. And uh, it's a little bit out of the ordinary, but it's uh, a really, really, really tight show. Yeah, I saw. You're right. <laughs> you really saw a little bit. And uh, from a situation that can happen in, in, I mean, not necessarily old school versus new school or old school versus old school which is when person turns on fours, like a lot of people, for, like you said, you like a half guard game, so you turn on fours a lot, sometimes you finish the reversal. So every time that happens, uh, I will show something that I can be really, really good for you. Okay, so just facilitate, let's get you grabbing my legs in the outside. So this is a bunch of different scenarios that can happen. Me trying to pass the body, turning on fours, or, or, or uh, him like trying to sweep me and getting here from half guard or from upper guard, whatever. So one of the things that people do here, of course, everybody tries to sprawl and get the back, which is, you know, the usual. But the thing is that when they do the regular approach for the sprawl, and I don't address his hip, there's a lot of things that Bernardo can do with this hip, right, Bernardo? Exactly, look at this, for example. He's already killing me there with just a little hip heist. So if the person has the gi, guys, I always recommend you to address the hip a little bit, either on the belt or on the pants. So once I'm sprawling, I'm not going here. I'm going with one hand in between the ears and the shoulders, and my other hand is going straight to the, to the hip. By holding him here, I'm already compromising him a little bit, but if he's really strong, he can beat my arm. Bang, like this, yes. So what do I do? I turn my shoulder. Now I try to bend my arm. Ah, now he's stuck. I turn my shoulder because now it's a bar. And then on this side, here, come here, please, on this side. This side, I'm already pushing my arm deep to reach four fingers on his collar. Lift your arm, uh, leg ahead of you a little bit. Then out, please. Yep. So I'm reaching four fingers on the collar. Like that. Okay? Boom. This way. So whenever I reach, guys, everybody expects me to go and do a lot of things going to the opposite side of the hand. So if I have the hand on the collar to the right, People expect me to go to the left to try, you know, loop chokes, to do a lot of things that actually I will stand my elbow and then the choke is going to be there. So it's very common when I start to do the pressure that uh, uh, Bernardo will get his head kind of going towards this side. So now I'm kind of losing a little bit of my pressure there. So I know that this is a reality that can happen. Could you have that? So when I feel that that's the case, my other hand is already coming out of the belt and going here to the opposite side of the collar. Let me turn you a little bit. Like there. So I have both of the hands grabbing, kind of like I'm grabbing a sword, like that, look. They cannot be too apart. They have to be kind of from the same line. Kind of like a samurai holding the sword. Okay? So once I, so once I have this, I will actually close my elbows. And when I close my elbows, I will try to kind of force uh, Bernardo's head to go to the opposite side, not to the side, that way, exactly. So when I close my elbow, look, boom, he's at it there, and then people think, oh man, now I'm out. There's no choke to be done anymore. <laughs> not at all. Toes on the ground, and then when I take my hip off the mat, I'll get an angle. 
to make sure that I can connect now. Look, I will be emphasizing that. My ribs and my hips. So I'm going completely to the other side. One, two, and I connect. When I connect now, guys, I will extend my elbows and I let my hip drop. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it gets tight really, really, really fast. So the idea is kind of almost like a clock choke. But the, the detail is that I'm not extending my elbows too much. I'm angling and my hip does most of the job. You see, I connect my ribs and then my hip makes his ear connect to his shoulder. And I drop the... <laughs> Good. And then I... <laughs> I'm just going to cut my neck off, so... <laughs> it's very tight.